It's incredible how many varieties of living stuff we have on this little planet of ours. There are over a million different species of insects alone, 10,000 species of birds, and more than seven and a half sorts of reptiles. And we're still counting. That's the thing you see, people discover new species all the time, so we may never actually know all the incredible life on this planet. Some things may remain mysterious forever. From seeing pink elephants to finding fish in the twilight zone, here are 20 most bizarre recently discovered species. Number 20. Venezuelan Poodle Moth this funny little creature has got all the entomologist people all excited, but also has kept them busy with a lot of puzzlement and head scratching. Scientists are freaking out over this newly discovered species. The Venezuelan poodle moth is such a rare and mysterious insect that even experts in such matters know next to nothing about it. There are only a few images of this moth, which has only been recognized since the year 2009. This furry white moth has these distinctive and complete completely unique ears that seem to poke out of the top of its head, giving it the vague resemblance to a gremlin. The trouble with these things is that they're so rare that there's hardly any information about them anywhere at all. What seems to be known is that they are a type of moth, so big whoop there. But the weird part of this is that they can't even decide if the poodle moth is actually a proper species because they don't have enough information about it and have barely even seen any photos of the miniature beast. Beyond that, nobody knows how many that there are in the world, or even really where they might be found. Obviously, they've been spotted in Venezuela, but no one is quite sure if this is the only place that they dwell, or if they might be discovered elsewhere across South America or beyond. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Mindoro Fanged Frog these newly discovered species may be just recently noticed by humans, but the chances are that they've actually been hopping about under our noses for donkey's years. However, the human power of perception, it's sometimes not as sharp as we would like to think that it is. That's literally what these frogs have been doing. They've been hiding in plain sight for a bazillion years or more, but because they bear such a striking resemblance to their cousins, the acanth's fanged frog, it seems that nobody noticed that they existed at all. The Mindoro fanged frog was discovered only recently, although the odds are that this little creature has been there the whole time and nobody has named it. So therefore, it didn't count as having existed yet. But that's how it goes. Fanged frogs are, in general, a slightly bizarre kind of frog because they have extra large teeth, which are not present in other sorts of frogs, and there are in total approximately 75 different species of these fanged frogs. But really, maybe there are a whole ton more that we just haven't noticed yet. Who could possibly say? Number 18. A new wasp species. Oh well, that's just great, isn't it? Just what we all need. A new species of the worst of all the stinging stuff. Shiny new wasps. Oh well, alright. These ones are apparently super tiny and they don't even sting. Call yourself a wasp, do you? Anyways, as thrilling as this all is, I should probably tell you a little bit about them for the sake of propriety. I mean, it's as dull as a dishwater, but here we are again, so let's get on with it. These wasps are just one teeny weeny millimeter long and they don't sting. They were discovered by a bunch of biologists in Texas near a graduate student pub that's apparently called Valhalla, rather grandiose for a crappy student dive, but whatever. Anyways, these Rice University types named the new species Neuroturus Valhalla as a result. And that's as about as interesting as it gets. Number 17. The Central African Slender Snouted Crocodile. Oh good! 
Finally, an animal that we can all get excited about. A crocodile. And who doesn't love a good bitey reptile? This is actually the story of the critically endangered, slender-snouted crocodile. It turns out that this is not just the one creature that's on the verge of extinction, but it's actually two species of lovely crocodiles that may be disappearing from our planet. And that fully sucks. There are West African versions of these sorts of crocodiles, and then there are also those who happen to be the Central African ones ones, which as it turns out, are actually a different species altogether. And that's extremely bad news for these creatures. If they thought there were not very many of them before, it turns out that there are much fewer now than were to be believed before that are divided between the two different distinct species. The numbers are considerably smaller, and that means that both species are actually at even greater risk of extinction than anyone first imagined. Number 16. Tardigrade or Water Bear well, this is surprising. These tardigrades are microscopic organisms which are found in various aquatic environments around the globe, and they may be amongst nature's most hardy creatures, even if you can barely even see them. Also known as water bears, these funny, wiggly, caterpillar-shaped animals have eight legs, segmented bodies, and flattened heads. Oh, and if their environmental conditions become too hazardous, these creatures are able to perform a neat trick in order to survive. They transform themselves into a dehydrated hydrated ball. This ball is known as a ton, and then they do that and simply wait it out. Not only do tardigrades have a remarkable built-in defense mechanism, they're also extraordinarily resilient in many environments. They can survive being exposed to radiation, to boiling liquids, and to intense pressure in the deepest of oceans. So never mind the cockroaches, it turns out that these funny little water bears will be the last ones standing when the rest of us all go to hell. No doubt these tough little organisms could make a go of it down there as well. Number 15. Pink Elephant now, if you're seeing pink elephants, you should probably put away the cooking sherry. Except if you happen to be in the Mala Mala private game reserve in South Africa. Then you might still be on the right side of pie-eyed. They've recently had a very rare albino elephant born in amongst their herds. These pink elephants, or albino elephants, are so incredibly rare amongst African elephants that there's very little that's been documented about them. And as far as this particular baby elephant is concerned, people have not been able to discern whether it's a true albino or whether the pink coloring is the result of leucism. which is a genetic condition that can cause the loss of pigmentation in the skin. Are you any kind of expert on elephant skin or something that doesn't sound as creepy and weird as that did? Let me know what you might be able to share about such things because there are always experts hiding everywhere, so don't be shy. One thing that we can probably say for sure though is that this is not a new species that scientists are freaking out over. This is just a regular old elephant and the fact that there's no information would suggest suggest that nobody's freaking out all that much. Except all you soppy sorts who are freaking out over how gosh darn cute the little chap is. Number 14. Joker Spider this species of spider has been recently discovered in Iran, and scientists, you know, those hip and happening people that they are, have given this one a name from popular culture, those scallywags. This is the Joker spider, which has been named for Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal of the Joker in the movie of the same name. The male of the species has a distinctive pattern on its abdomen that bears more than a passing resemblance to the famous makeup that Phoenix wore in the role for the movie, but what do you think of this snazzily dressed little spider? Spider. And how about the notion of naming stuff after movies? What will people make of these sort of names in a couple hundred years? Let's have a gossip about it in the comments section down below, shall we? Number 13. Madagascar's Mouse Lemur so this mouse lemur is a new species of the tiniest little primates in the whole wide world, and these cute but diminutive creatures are more easily spotted by scientists in the forest of Madagascar if they look for their eyes gleaming in the dark. They have eyes that are extremely large in relation to their minuscule bodies, and these creatures are no bigger than a fist weighing less than a tennis ball. They're also very, very shy, hence the reason that they've remained undiscovered for so long. And being nocturnal, you can't try to spot them in the day because they're off somewhere else just sleeping. 
Unfortunately for the pint-sized primate, it may already be endangered. Well, it was probably better off before people even knew it existed, to be honest, but that's a situation rather like trying to put the toothpaste back into the tube. Anyways, the tiny creatures hail from Madagascar and have been given the official name of Microbius Johanni after a famous primatologist who had dedicated his life to Madagascar's lemurs and protecting and studying them. There are actually 107 known species species of lemur, and almost all of those are at risk of extinction. These mouse lemurs are found only on Madagascar, in areas where the forests are under constant threat and are sadly rapidly disappearing. Number 12. Pygmy Pipe Horse Closely related to the seahorse, the pygmy pipe horse is a newly discovered species that's been observed in the waters in a very small area off the north coast of New Zealand. These little creatures are the color of candy canes, measuring about six centimeters in length. That's less than two and a half inches. They've been formally given a Maori name. It's believed to be the first time that a new species of animal has been formally named by an indigenous people. They have, of course, been naming things all along, but apparently none of that counts until it's formal, you know. Anyways, this is all veering off into the controversial and colonial, so let's just stare at these pretty little creatures and their weird little cupheads for a few moments and wonder at the extraordinary nature of our planet and all the incredible life that it sustains, whether or not it has an official name or even if the right people have discovered that it exists. Number 11. Peacock Spiders Australia sure does have a whole lot of spiders. In fact, they've basically got all the spiders, especially the most bitey and poisonous and murderous sorts. So the discovery of yet another species of spider is not all that surprising, to be honest, but here we are. This time around, we're looking at a species of peacock spider, a member of the Meritus genus, which now has at least 92 members of species amongst its numbers. This one is rather snazzy in its bright orange stripes, and it has a bit of a look of the clownfish about it, so that's nice for fans of Finding Nemo who want a little bit of Disney action in their scary spider. For this reason, the species has been dubbed the Meritus Nemo, and up close, its multiple green eyes and hairy legs give it a less of a Disney appeal and more of a Swamp Thing sort of toxic waste mutant vibe. But hey, what do I know about naming species? I've just heard about this one myself. It could probably be fake. But apparently Australia has so many flipping species species and so much space filled with natural stuff that it's estimated that only about 30% of its biodiversity has actually been officially documented. This means that there may be loads of species out there that nobody's even heard of, and they're going to need names. I mean, what would you name a new species of spider if you happen to find one? Would you be all super vain and name it after yourself? Or perhaps you'd name it for your nan or your pet guinea pig? Let me know all about your fabulous thoughts and the matter in the comments section down below. Number 10. The Tapanuli Orangutan Sometimes it takes a really, really long time for scientists to figure out if a species is actually different from others that look the same, or if it's just another of the same kind, or something like that. All this species naming malarkey seems to be fraught with confusion and quite a lot of surprisingly made up stuff, so who can possibly say just how it's supposed to be done? Anyways, this is the story of the Tapanuli orangutan, which is it has been officially decided, a different species from the other sorts of orangutans that exist. Well, that's a double-edged sword, given the endangered difficulties that these animals find themselves in the midst of dealing with right now. <laughs> It would take scientists years to research the Tapanuli orangutan to examine its genetic, physical, and behavioral differences, all before they decided that it was actually a different species from the Sumatran and Bornean orangutans. And yes, those ones are extremely at risk, even as they were essentially celebrating the so-called discovery of a new species, those same scientists were warning that they were in grave danger of extinction, specifically as they exist only in a small area which is apparently under the threat of deforestation from the construction of a hydropower dam that's due to be placed right on top of the sole remaining habitat for this ape. And of course, that would likely threaten their existence completely, and that would be a damn shame. Number 9. Deep Sea Lizard Fish 
Ugh, this one's a little bit of a creepster, but then again, most of the deep sea dwelling sorts of creatures, they're not exactly oil paintings, are they? I mean, for the most part, they have not even evolved to be beautiful, mostly on the account of the fact that they live in total darkness. So this particular deep sea inhabitant has been recently discovered. It's a deep sea lizard fish dwelling deep down at about 800 feet below the surface. It's been accused of being menacingly the National Geographic, and others have said that it will give you nightmares. Well, whatever. It does happen to have some interesting features, though, if you happen to like that sort of thing. These lizard fish have a very large mouth, which contains hinged teeth, which basically means that anything that's unlucky enough to find itself inside of that mouth is not going to be getting out again. The more it might struggle, the further into the gross, creepy mouth it's going to end up. But even if it's not a great beauty, the creature is certainly well adapted to its habitat at the bottom of the deep, dark Australian abyss in the middle of the ocean. And it's probably just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all that deep sea life that we've yet to find out about, and that's pretty cool, really. Number 8. Albino Sea Turtle a baby sea turtle is turned up on a beach in South Carolina, which is, you know, usually no big deal. Except that this one's white all over instead of the standard turtley shades of greeny brown. Apparently this is not actually a new species. I mean, like, duh. It's simply a sea turtle with a different sort of coloring. This is apparently caused by leucism, which is a condition that reduces the pigmentation in animals, a bit like that pink elephant that we were looking at earlier. And while it is cute, that reduction in pigment might make this little animal more vulnerable simply by making it more visible to predators or from the harsh rays of the sun. Anyways, it certainly is cute, like all baby sea turtles. I mean, just look at them all tumbling down the beach towards the ocean. It's impossible not to feel full of joy just witnessing such a moment, let alone the super rare addition of a little completely white sea turtle in the mix as well. How lucky us. Number 7. Genie's Dogfish This recently discovered species of deepwater shark is named Genie's Dogfish after the eminent shark researcher Eugenie Clark. She died back in 2015 at the age of 92, so she'll never know that she has her very own species of shark, which seems a bit of a pity, really. Why not do some of this naming malarkey to honor those significant people when they're still alive to enjoy the honor? It's just a suggestion. But all this posthumous business seems to miss the point a little bit. Besides all the usual naming nonsense, this is a species of shark that would be discovered in the Gulf of Mexico by a gaggle of researchers. It's a small creature that looks a lot like many other deep water sharks. They've all been affected by the same evolutionary pressures, and that means that those that have made it this far, well, they tend to end up looking kind of similar on the account of having the same kinds of characteristics. You know, the ones that let them survive in their own environment. Anyways, all the stuff that scientists can now do with genetic research means that they're able to differentiate between species and establish that they are, in fact, separate from one another, although they've evolved along similar evolutionary lines. The best thing about this discovery was that it basically coincided just perfectly with the Discovery Channel's Shark Week, thus making it all much more exciting for everyone. Number 6. Hammer-Headed Bat now, this is not actually a newly discovered species as such. The hammer-headed bat has been around for a while, but what has been more recently discovered about this species is even more scary than its distinctive freaky appearance. Also known as the hammer-headed fruit bat, this animal is found all across West and Central Africa. There are loads of these bats everywhere with their big weird faces, massive wingspans reaching up to 3.3 feet. You can't really miss them, but that wide distribution is not necessarily a good thing thing when it comes to this creature. These are one of the three species of African fruit bat that are believed to be infected with the Ebola virus. Hooray! And if that's not scary enough, you know with all the terrible eyeball bleeding and death and such, these creatures just carry it about. They're believed to be asymptomatically infected, and scientists don't actually know if they're hosting the virus incidentally, or if they're in fact one of the roots of its existence. They're all found across the region in moist forests of the tropical lowlands, swamps, and mangroves, and they roost in the trees in these places in small groups of between 5 to 25 individuals. Number 5. Easter Egg Weevil 
Just how interesting the discovery of a new species of weevil is, well, that's probably more of a matter of personal taste. But if you've ever discovered a weevil in your food cupboard, then you probably won't be amongst those that are welcoming this discovery with enormous enthusiasm. Unless, of course, that happens to be your particular thing, in which case you'll find no judgment here. Found in the damp and densely leafy canopies of the forests of the Philippines, these weevils have been recently discovered and given all the shiny new credentials of a species in their own right, which also includes their very own name. These insects are kind of cool looking and unlike most other boring, plain-colored weevils. These bugs have snazzy patterns all across their bodies, which are combinations of iridescent greens and yellows. The patterns on these weevils have been said to share some similarities with the indigenous Obu Manuvu tribe, and so they've received a name that honors that. They're officially called something really huge that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. But otherwise, they're generally known as Easter egg weevils, on account of their especially brightly colored and patterned wrapping. Number four, millipede. Now here's a fact that's going to shock you to your very core. Most millipedes, well, they're not really millipedes. It's a shocker, I know, but all species of millipede up to this point have not actually had 1,000 legs, as we've been led to believe this whole entire time. I mean, who the heck even knew? I never thought to count them, did you? But anyways, it turns out that we've all been duped by this so-called fact all along. But now, finally, there's a genuine true millipede out there, one that actually has more than 1,000 legs. In fact, the new species of Persephone millipede has 1,306 legs, to be precise. These millipedes have been found dwelling deep underground, over 200 feet down, which is why we've never noticed them before in the wilds of Australia, because where else? The scientist who discovered it and somehow managed to convince it to stay still long enough to count all of its legs decided to name it after Persephone, the Greek goddess and queen of the underworld, presumably on the account of this bug living way, way down under the earth. Not only is this the true millipede, it also is a creature with the most legs on the whole planet Earth, at least as far as we know at this point in time anyways, and even though the biggest one that they found was only 4 inches in length, she still had loads more legs than the next leggiest creature, a millipede from Silicon Valley in California which had a feeble 750. Pfft, I scoff at your previous millipeding efforts. Number 3. Wakanda fish. Well, it does make sense that stuff from popular culture makes its way into the naming of species and such. Scientists are nerds, and nerds love comic books, and Marvel movies, and all of that stuff. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with any of that. It's all perfectly acceptable, right? One of the latest discoveries has been likened to the warriors of Wakanda from Black Panther. At 260 feet below the surface of the water, scientists have discovered a fish that's patterned with scales of deep purple. Scientists were on a project out in the California Academy of Sciences known as the Hope for Reefs Initiative, which is focused on researching and restoring the coral reef systems of the world. They were found living in the dark coral reefs that are known as the Twilight Zone in the Indian Ocean off the coast of Tanzania. Also called fairy rassis, these Wakanda fish had never even been seen before. They do live below three limits for recreational diving at depths between 200 and 500 feet below the surface you know, but these previously undiscovered fish have absolutely captivated everyone who's witnessed them ever since. What else might be hiding down in the twilight zone? Number two, a new mosasaur. Well, this one's just a teeny weeny bit misleading. These quote unquote newly discovered creatures actually lived millions of years ago. They haven't just been unearthed and embarrassing stoic living in Steve and Linda's hot tub or anything as exciting as that. But here we go, anyways. Why not mix it up a little bit? Dead for millions of years? Newly discovered? It's the same difference, really, isn't it? The so called new species of Mosasaur would be found swimming in the oceans of the Earth way back between 72 and 66 million years ago, and it was not unlike our contemporary 
temporary ones, with their long and narrow snout and rows of teeth. These are relatives of crocodiles and alligators, and therefore amongst the best animals that there have ever been naturally. It turns out that these particular species of mosasaurs were alive at a time when the planet had sort of accidentally outdone itself. There were so many creatures in the waters of the world that they were literally suffering from overcrowding. This was a time when there were so many massive creatures living out in the sea that they were all in competition for food with each other. This is why a lot of the so-called mega predators died out. They were simply too many of them for it to be sustainable. There was not enough food, space, or even resources for this many enormous hungry creatures. The new mosasaur with its long and characteristic snout seems to have been adapted to a specific kind of predation within the ecosystem. Scientists believe that these creatures were relatively adaptable and could choose different sorts of prey depending on what was more readily available. But they've still been dead an awfully long time to be considered a new anything, you know. Number 1. Mata Mata Turtle the Mata Mata turtle is a resident of South America. It's an unusual looking sort of creature with an especially knobby shell and large flat head and a wide mouth with a long snout. The Mata Mata shell is what makes this chap stand out from the crowd. It's large and gnarly with a big spherical cone shaped novels poking out of it. This poor old turtle is no oil painting. Its neck is flat and wide, covered with warts and bumpy skin. It has a triangular shaped squashed head and a long snout that it uses as a snort. They have eyes on the sides of their weird heads, but they have very poor vision, using instead their fleshy flaps on the sides of their heads to sense movements in the water. They can feel vibrations that may warn them of a predator nearby, and they also have extremely sensitive hearing. What a lot of weird and wonderful discoveries. What did you think of all these new and unusual creatures? And do you wish that any of the creatures had remained undiscovered? What else do you think could be out there? As always, let me know all your splendid thoughts in the comments section down below. I know you want to. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.